All right, folks, we're going to get started right now uh, with some very serious news. Uh, dire warnings for storm-weary Floridians as Hurricane Milton approaches. That's right, another hurricane. This one is going to affect uh, a smaller area of land, but this looks to be quite serious. Weary Floridians prepared for Monday for mass evacuations as Hurricane Milton, the second major hurricane in two weeks, took aim at much of the state's Gulf Coast. Governor Ron DeSantis urged residents to heed county evacuation orders for vulnerable areas, including parts of the densely populated Tampa Bay region. Highways seem certain to snarl with with traffic as people living in low-lying and coastal areas began fleeing to higher ground. If we knew exactly where it's going to hit, we probably would evacuate fewer people, Mr. DeSantis said on Monday morning at a news briefing about the storm. But we don't know that. What we do know is that books like Gender Queer have no place in our students' uh, school <laughs> libraries. And they're like, Governor, please stay focused. This is an emergency. This is an emergency. Time is limited. My edit. The people of Florida are suffering from hurricane fatigue. Many remain out of their homes, having experienced a devastating storm surge during Hurricane Helene last month. It was the second Category 4 storm to strike the western coast of Florida in 13 months after Hurricane Idalia in 2023. A weaker storm, Hurricane Debbie, also blew through the region in August. And a few residents, few residents, pardon me, have been able to forget Hurricane Ian, a fierce, a fierce Category 5 storm that killed about 150 people when it made landfall in southwest Florida in 2022. Some of the people who drowned in Ian's storm surge might have lived if they had evacuated to the mainland from Barrier Island communities, Kevin Guthrie, director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, said in a somber tone during the briefing. Uh, sorry, there we go. Uh, if your plan calls for you to evacuate, you should do so today, he said. Get on the road today, wherever that might be. Mr. DeSantis said that tolls would be suspended on evacuation routes, including highways in western central Florida and Alligator Alley, the stretch of Interstate 75 through the Everglades between Naples and Miami. Mr. Guthrie said that certain state buildings and vacant buildings could be put to use as supplementary emergency shelters if places already designated as shelters, in most cases public schools, fill up with evacuees. To prepare for the storm, the state has marshaled fuel supplies, utility crews, and ambulances, Mr. DeSantis said. We have no way of knowing how it's going to shake out, he said, referring to the storm's precise path and intensity at landfall. Even so, Milton is projected to remain a hurricane, he said, as it blows across the Florida peninsula to the Atlantic all the way until it exits the state. It's going to be powerful. Damn. So this is some radar of the storm hurricane milton is now 175 mile per hour category five storm uh and tied as the fourth strongest atlantic hurricane in history here's another uh photo some radar a bit more recent an update milton is one of the strongest hurricanes ever recorded with maximum sustained winds of 180 miles per hour now the path of this is coming through the gulf and it's going to kind of go across the middle of the state and then i guess hopefully out to sea so it doesn't ride up the coast and uh impact more land on the eastern coast uh of the u.s but it is expected to hit extremely hard and so uh it is uh an extremely serious situation uh for florida here is a weather report uh that we're going to show you an emotional hurricane milton update from john morales tv as the storm hits Category 5 status. Let me uh, load this. Oops. Sorry. Why, why is that doing that to me today? There we go. Uh, my apologies. Here we go. Here it is. Incredible, incredible, incredible hurricane. Uh, it has dropped... It has dropped 50 millibars in 10 hours. Um... I apologize. This is just horrific. Um, winds, maximum sustained winds are 160 miles per hour. And um, it, uh, it is just uh, gaining strength in the Gulf of Mexico, where you can imagine uh, the winds, I mean, the seas are just so incredibly, incredibly hot. 
a record hot, as you might imagine. You know what's driving that. I don't need to tell you. Global warming, climate change uh, leading to this and becoming an increasing threat uh, for uh, the Yucatan, uh, including Merida and Progreso and other areas there. Uh, let's see if I can show you um, the latest. Uh, there's the Cat 5 information. Uh, winds 160 miles per hour. Uh, moving east-southeast at 9 miles per hour. And uh, uh, on that track, you're going to notice that this system is going to come very, very close uh, to uh, the Yucatan. And the dirty side of this hurricane, folks, is on the right-hand side of its progress. Um, so therefore, they're going to get the dirty side there. Uh, these communities, many of them, uh, as you might imagine, uh, many folks, you know, in that area have just the very basics, just the basics, nothing else but that. So it's going to be very tough. Now let's transition to Florida uh, because even though it is expected to weaken on approach, it is so incredibly strong right now that um, you're going to find it very difficult for it to be nothing less than a major hurricane when it makes landfall in Florida. And so that is on its way as he mentioned hot waters in the gulf we got into this with our friend kit cabell uh a bit uh last week uh for the last hurricane hurricane helene which we're still reeling from obviously see the ocean heat fueling hurricane milton in one chart so there you see uh the bell curve of the average temperatures from 2013 to 2023 uh hotter waters mean stronger storms pretty simple the energy that supercharged Hurricane Milton into a Category 5 storm on Monday came from the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, which have been abnormally warm, not just at the surface, but at depth, too. For a year and a half now, the upper layer of the world's oceans has been at or near its hottest temperatures on record. The seas absorb most of the extra heat that carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases trap near Earth's surface. So the same human-caused forces that have been bringing abnormal heat to towns, cities, and landscapes are helping to warm the oceans. The regions of the Atlantic where hurricanes tend to form have been no exceptions. Ocean heat content is a metric that captures the amount of thermal energy stored from the sea surface down through the ocean depths. When the seas are warm, more water evaporates at the surface. Storms drag this humid air aloft where it condenses into clouds and rain. This releases heat that helps draw even more air skyward, allowing storms to strengthen and grow. Record ocean warmth is one reason forecasters began saying months ago that they expected this year's hurricane season to be hyperactive. Storms that traverse particularly hot spots are more likely to intensify rapidly, as Milton did on Monday and Hurricane Helene did last month, before killing more than 230 people across the southeast. How did two powerful hurricanes spin up in the Gulf of Mexico in such quick succession? Typically, storms' ferocious winds churn up the ocean's cooler, deeper waters, helping bring down the temperature at the surface somewhat. Helene very likely did this too, though scientists have been unable to retrieve some of the latest data on sea surface temperatures because Helene knocked out a key federal facility, the National Centers for Environmental Information, in Asheville, North Carolina. Crucially, though, Milton gained strength over the western gulf, whereas Helene did so over the eastern gulf. That means they tapped separate sources of ocean energy, said Kim Wood, an associate professor of hydrology and atmospheric sciences at the University of Arizona. For scientists, this hurricane season has been staggering to witness. It's felt like an entire hurricane season has taken place over the past few weeks, Dr. Wood said. There are nearly two full months in the season still to come. Yes, yeah, so as we mentioned on the last show, hurricane season runs uh, through November 30th. So we are still almost 60 days out from the end of hurricane season. FEMA says it's out of disaster relief cash. And uh, the warm Gulf waters seem to be driving these extreme storms. Now, look, I'm not here to tell everyone to switch to paper straws. I know those are a pain in the ass, right? Um, and yo... You think I'm blackpilled about Kamala versus Trump. Wait till I get on the whole human extinction uh, beat. I'll spare you guys that today. But what I will say is that there's no point in me preaching to you uh, the virtues of environmentalism. I don't quite believe that in them myself much 
anymore. It seems obvious to me that human beings don't really have the will to make those changes over a sustained period of time. And I don't even mean that as a judgment, you know, um, you know, it, it's it's unfair to to expect that underdeveloped countries curb their uh, developments in the name of, you know, environmental progress, so to speak. So I'm not here to get on my soapbox about that. What I am here to tell you is that it seems pretty obvious and it was laid out pretty clearly there that warmer Gulf waters mean stronger storms. To say that the warmer Gulf temperatures have nothing to do with this hurricane season seems to be insane. It seems to be insane. It seems pretty obvious that warmer Gulf you're, waters you're, are fueling these storms. What you're not taking into account, I feel, which, you know, a lot of a lot of people like yourself, you know, kind of deep state tools. Um, Keaton has been driving a nicer car lately. I haven't yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Where yeah. it came from. You're not taking into account the right. WEF is controlling our weather. You're, you're not you're not looking at that. You're not looking at the cabal that is actually causing these storms for political reasons. Marjorie right. Taylor Greene <laughs> tried to <laughs> yeah, exactly. tried to warn us. She was silenced. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know who's paying you. Right. I don't know who's paying you not to share this with our audience, but I'm not afraid. Yeah. Come on, come <laughs> for me, man. I'm right here. He's I'm right, right here. here. I know what you're doing. It's in Harlem. I know what you're doing. One time, one time, right after we did a show attacking the deep state, it was only raining on my side of the street. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. All yep. right. Now, sometimes that happens naturally, but what are the odds? What are the odds? That's right. That's right. right. So take that into account. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good point, Charles. Good point, Charles. Yes. Thanks for yes. checking me, Charles. Yeah. Thanks for exposing you're, me. You're Charles. not you're not you're not gonna spread that big weather propaganda here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean I mean on, honestly, a lot of very smart people are saying that's why the guy got choked up because yeah, he wanted right. to tell people the truth about the storm, <laughs> but yeah. they threatened his dog. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No. Good point. Good point. I'm glad you provided some perspective on that. Uh, yeah. but you know, in all seriousness, uh, the, the effects of this storm are not going to be a laughing matter. And we hope that everybody yeah. who is in Florida, uh, finds a way to, to safety. Um, we know our friend, uh, Dan, the, the Motley Jew just survived one. And, uh, <laughs> as I understand, this is coming right for you, Dan. So I, I hope you're good. I mean, you have an RV. I, I think you'll, I think you'll, you'll get to safety, but yeah, no, it is, uh, well, and our friend it's going to be horrible. Holtz. Yeah, Joey Holtz. Yep, our old friend Joey Holtz um, uh, is is trying to to uh, make it out of there now. Um, you know, we know some people in Florida. JB's in Florida. I wonder where JB's going because he just seems to be right in the path of that, right? Orlando, is he in Florida. Gonna, is that where yeah, he is? Yeah. I mean, as I understand, it's going to go right across the the center. That's what's going to get the brunt of it. That sort of I four corridor there, um, Tampa, Orlando area. Which, of course, you know, Florida is, you know a pretty narrow state and uh this seems to be a pretty uh big storm so a lot of the state is going to be affected by this and then it is expected as i understand to blow out to sea to kind of go right through it and out uh, look if if donald trump does get elected because of the incompetent response to these storms i think we're gonna have to accept jesus because at that point how do you deny god is on trump's side right yeah, yeah right. exactly. I mean, clearly, he yeah. sent the storms to make him the president. What other sign do you need? Yeah, yeah. Divine intervention of a kind, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I know that it's been a lot. I know Russell was working a bit uh, there. But uh, yeah, it, it certainly seems like the warmer Gulf weather is intensifying these storms on their path right before they hit. Well, sure. This is why, and this is, you know, certainly right now the concern is with people who do live there. Um, but I was saying this during the pandemic when uh, the big story was people migrating to the Southwest and to the Southeast. And I, I don't get that. It's, it's just people have this main character syndrome where they'll move to these very dangerous areas where, I mean, if you're paying any kind of attention, you know, the trends there are not good in terms of the sustainability of human habitation at the scale that it exists in these areas now. And people just, they buy houses there. I don't, I, I don't understand it. I mean, in the Western States, 
you have the depletion of water resources is mainly yeah. what I'm talking about. In addition to the wildfires, mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, it's far it, into uh, Colorado, man. I know people in Colorado, they can smell that shit when, when California is on fire, that smoke is coming there. That's, I don't understand why you'd move to California now for that reason. It's on fire half the year. Why would you move there? You know, Florida, the deep yeah. South, like any of these places that are prone to these hurricanes, how, how do you go buy a house there? I don't understand it. It is true that like the Northeast, you know, I was thinking about it while we were prepping this. The Northeast really has like the worst weather, but the best climate, if that makes sense. Like we don't get that many nice days here. You know, we have very hot summers and very cold winters. You know, when you live in New York, it's either you're either sweating your balls off or it's raining or it's really cold. You know, we get we get, you know, maybe maybe 30 days a year where you're like, oh, it's so nice today. The weather's not an obstacle today. But in terms of the climate, it probably is the best. I mean, we don't get the wildfires, really. We had nope. one w where the wind blew in from Canada last year and made the sky yeah, orange where it was weird. Days. Well, that wasn't last but year. But we don't get the big summer. hurricanes. We don't get the tornadoes. You know, it's like the weather is always kind of a minor inconvenience here. But thankfully, it's usually just that, a minor inconvenience. It's it's a temperate climate. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's very rare. That's why Sandy was such a big deal, because we never get anything yeah. like that that just doesn't happen in this part of the country um to move from a part of the country where look you live in the northeast the idea you're going to get killed by the weather it's just not a thing yeah it's just yeah, not a thing really like sure it. it could happen but it's just it's freakish like the idea that you might drown in your car because of a flash flood as you have in the midwest like we just yes in terms of that this is the safest part of the country you could live in. So people who move to places that you know are on a glide path to increasingly challenging uh, conditions. Uh, how you buy a house near the coast in Florida, I do not understand what you're thinking. Again, it's that main character syndrome. It's just it's never going to happen to me. Yeah, no, I mean, look, this we've been seeing this stuff for for a long time, for a long time. And look, it's always been a risk of, of living, especially in a state like Florida and, you know, Louisiana, right? All those Gulf states, you know, you have uh, warm right. summers in very humid uh, areas that is sort of, you know, um, prime real estate for intense storms. But they're getting two back to back here. And uh, it's right, you know. I right. just hope everybody oh I hope everybody gets safe there because it looks like this is gonna hit extremely hard. Please clap. <laughs>